Okay, since the last video, I've upgraded uh, UDK to the May beta. One thing that you'll get with the May beta that you haven't had in previous versions is that they now have a 64-bit version of both the editor and the game. Uh, so if you are running a 64-bit operating system, uh, I do recommend that you upgrade to the um, uh, May beta just so that you can get the most out of your processor. Now the first thing that's immediately obvious is um, if we look at the map that we've been working on, everything has gone so dark. In fact, if we come over here uh, and uh, look at this pathway around the side here, uh, it's almost completely black. Um, in fact, it might appear that it is completely black. There is some uh, little bit of light there, um, but it, um, for the most part, looks like it looks almost like global illumination has been switched off and we're not getting any light bouncing on this wall. Uh, in fact, um, global illumination and light bouncing is still working the way that it, um, it was in the last uh, video. It's just that since then, uh, we have had a new... Um, oh, in this uh, version of UDK, the, the May beta, they have um, enabled by default uh, a new feature uh, which is called tone mapping and um, the tone mapping has resulted in this very sort of high contrast uh, view that you um, you see here in fact if I just play an editor and run around uh, you'll notice that um, in some of these areas it can be a little bit hard to even see uh, where we're going what's uh, what's actually going on uh, particularly sort of places like here it's a bit of a blind jump and um, this pathway here is particularly um, dark in our map. Uh, now, the, uh, the next thing that you'll notice is that um, our heads-up display, or our user interface, um, has changed. Um, you'll notice we have a compass up in the top right, and uh, down in the uh, bottom right, um, we have uh, new icons and um, a new way of sort of uh, looking at the uh, user interface. This is because the user interface um, has been changed to a new technology um, called GFX and uh, GFX uses uh, flash movie files instead of the old UI scene packages that were used in previous versions of UDK. Uh, the old versions of UI scenes are actually getting phased out sometime this year uh, and so we will um, have to convert to GFX eventually. This also means that I'll um, have to find out um, how to apply that um, that UI scene that stopped uh, Bill or Bob running away or shooting us, uh, see if we can um, do that with GFX as well. Um, so with this sort of new um, tone mapping enabled, um, this map has become basically too dark to play. Uh, if you're if you have developed a map and uh, you found that um, the May beta has done this to your map, uh, you more or less have two options. Um, the first way, which is probably the hard way, but might be the, in my opinion, it's the, it's the best option, is that you can go around and select your lights and you can adjust them one by one or um, uh, adjust them, adjust identical lights um, all at the same time. And uh, by adjust, I mean you can increase the, the radius of each light. Um, you can reduce its um, fall-off exponent. And you can increase brightness. Um, basically, everything that I told you to do in the last video uh, when converting a map uh, from Unreal Tournament 3, uh, don't do that. <laughs> do, the, do the opposite of, of, what I, um, uh, of what I told you to do in that, that video. Um, for this May beta. If, however, you um, really don't like the way that uh, everything looks um, and you'd like to go back to how things looked in the old versions of UDK um, or you're, you just couldn't be bothered sort of going around and adjusting every light in your scene, you can switch off the new tone mapping feature. Uh, now, I don't recommend that you do this uh, because, well, basically I think that lighting, once the lighting is adjusted, it does look better this way. 
um, but also because um, in order to do this um, we are going to have to change a default package um, in UDK which means that if you change it for one you more or less change it for every map that you do from then on uh, but if you have your heart set on it I'll show you how to do that now so in the content browser I'm just going to uh, come up and type in UT post in our filter uh, I'm going to find UT post process underscore console and double click on that this is our post process editor and um, I'm just going to select the node uber post process effect and here we have an option under uber post process effect saying enable HDR tone mapper just uncheck that box and it's as simple as that and now if we look at our scene uh, you can see that everything has gone back to the lighting uh, as it was in um, the April beta and previous versions of UDK now um, this does mean that we will have to save uh, the package that um, this uh, this exists in in fact um, I'll just clear that out this is the package um, that uh, uh, we will have to save over uh, and you can find and you can see that the post process console is um, is in this um, this package this folder um, which means that we are affecting the actual default settings of UDK of the game itself uh, so I really don't recommend that you do that um, now the other option that you can take is uh, as I said go around and adjust all of the scene all of the lighting in your scene and so um, in order to show you that I'm just going to go back into this um, UT post process and I will switch the tone mapper back on and now I am going to uh, as you can see it's gone very dark again now I'm going to go to um, the new version of this map where I've adjusted all of this lighting in fact I'm just going to go to a bookmark I'm going to switch on game mode and this is just so that um, you can see the difference um, immediately so I will pause the game load up the new map um, in this exact position uh, and you'll be able to see the um, the difference uh, immediately okay so uh, here we are and this is the uh, same map uh, but with the uh, lighting adjusted to um, to compensate for that um, that new sort of uh, post-processing or the tone mapping and you can see that this uh, pathway here is still quite dark uh, but it is light enough that we can um, see our way uh, around this um, this edge here and the the way that I um, filled in this um, side is that I actually uh, brought in if I switch game mode off uh, I brought in um, a new directional light um, as a fill light which again is basically reversing all the things that I told you to do in the last lesson um, so uh, let's have a look at uh, what this looks like in game you can see that um, the textures and the lighting I think does look a lot better it looks a lot sort of um, looks a lot harder and uh, more realistic in a way uh, another thing that has been uh, brought in in this version is that the fog we now have something called exponential fog which is essentially a, um, a softer fog and it, it um, has uh, greater sort of color control and uh, I'll show you um, how to use that fog in, a, in another unit and the last thing that I'll show you in this video is something that there is a lot of um, excitement about and that is uh, the introduction of light shafts uh, if we look up we can see that we actually have um, uh, light casting shadows in this fog and it is essentially uh, casting sunbeams or moonbeams and we can switch this on for more or less any light in our scene uh, which does add uh, if not a, a degree of realism uh, some really nice eye candy to to our um, to our levels so in the uh, next video uh, we are going to get started on um, our kismet